So yeah, I moved here uh, in 2006, kind of by accident. Uh, I applied for this internship that I thought was in New York, where I'm from. <laughs> Turns out it was here. It was uh, to work for David Milch. Uh, wow. And that was like my introduction to like television, and that was wild. This guy is uh, like a maniac. He's so smart, so interesting. He doesn't actually write himself. He doesn't like touch computers, so he just sort of like laid down the ground. And he had these like rubber shoes that didn't have laces because his wife thought he would like use the laces to hang himself. So he would just like lay on the ground and kind of like performance right, right? And uh, his typist would kind of sit there and everyone would kind of sit around him and just kind of, you know, watch him go and just kind of like clap and say, yeah, that, that, that works, that works. Um, David Melch, if you don't know, he created what, uh, NYPD Blue and Deadwood. And when I had gotten there, they were just getting into the show called John from Cincinnati. And uh, it was it was a cool idea that just kind of kind of went off the rails at some point. But as far as I was concerned, I was like, get me out of LA. Just, this is like a this is a crazy town. And uh, I've been here for like eight years, and I don't know what happened. I, I still I've been trying to leave. Finally, the first, time, the first time I was able to like leave was like I wrote a show set in New York City, and now I get to go to New York for four months a year to like film it. That's the only reason it's set in New York City so I could get out of this town. But, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know about this right. is like helping anyone. No, no, yeah, that's a great story. Yeah, thank you. Right. Yeah. All right, so next yeah. we have Lauren. Uh, it's funny, I have a coworker who worked for David Wilch and has those same exact stories. Uh, uh, I'm a writer on Orange is the New Black. Um, I I don't even I don't know how I'm here. I have zero things to tell you. I was a dance major in college, so you should definitely do that. Um, that's my advice to all of you. I have a BFA in modern dance. I moved to Los Angeles in 2007 and meandered for a very long time. Uh, I was an assistant at a terrible dance agency that represented like. Crumpers, and uh, that's true. They made me change my name because they already had a Lauren that worked there. And that's also true. Um, and then I quit that, and then I was a personal assistant for five years. And I was so miserable uh, when I was a personal assistant that I started writing. So that's like step number. Step number one is get a BFA in modern dance. Step number two is be really, really unhappy in your life. Uh, I started. Yeah, 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 yeah. You should be really ill-adjusted. Um, uh, so I started writing. How many of you are ill and oh, <laughs> There you go. You're a set. I have a great therapist. Um, uh, so I started writing uh, just for myself to sort of keep myself sane, and through that process, um, eventually found my way to a manager through a mutual friend, and my manager got me my agent, and. Once I got my agent, I was like, I am set. Like, everything is going to be fine now. And then I went through a staffing season and didn't get a single meeting. And that was a really, probably necessary um, awakening of how hard it was going to be. And uh, then I got hired on Orange is the New Black. <laughs> uh, I'm Jeff High. Uh, I currently show run, exec produce Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Um, I've I've been doing this now for about 13 years. I got into television on the X Files, which was my gateway drug. Um, I I came out here to go to UCLA Film School, so a little bit more traditional way. I wanted to write and direct little indie films, which is why I'm doing giant Marvel TV shows. Um, made a little short at UCLA. A little black and white nonlinear narrative. I don't know if I want to go to Hollywood, this and that. It ended up getting some awards. Uh, I got some meetings. They go, what are you doing next? I said, I don't know. I'm writing a feature based on that. Uh, I hadn't really ever thought about the writing part of writing directing. You know, that you have to do that. So I sat down and wrote a feature of that. And a different way to do it. Uh, that won an award, which got me an agent, got Sydney Pollock to option that. So suddenly I was a maid. And it was really easy. Right. What I think maybe all of us could do is we could tell there's a really cool, happy version where I got a film school, they optioned my spec screenplay in Sydney Pollock, and I made an indie film, and then I went over to the X Files, and I got a show run after a couple years on Angel because somebody moved, and here I am, and that, yay, that helps you not at all. <laughs> <laughs> there's a version where 
I did the same and I got out of film school and I felt like a complete fraud and failure because I never wanted to write and I was terrified of writing again. Finally got to make the indie film I wanted to make. It was a disastrous experience with a producer who was interested in crushing young directors and I thought I'll never do this again. I floundered for a couple of years. I had a chance to meet Chris Carter and I loved The X-Files. It was the only TV show I really watched at the time. I wasn't a TV guy. I did no, Nobody at UCLA said go into TV. It was the School of Theater, Film, <laughs> Television. <laughs> like, it, just, it just wasn't presented. And, and so I pitched three stories. He bought a story. At the end of the development, they offered me a staff position. And again, I thought, I don't really think I want to do TV. And then I said yes, because I really had no other options. And it turned out to be the greatest secret kept for me. You know, I wrote a script in a couple weeks. And after having made a lot of features that never got made, two weeks later, you know, we're shooting it. The director's saying, how did you feel about that? And you're in casting. And as a guy who likes filmmaking, the whole thing, TV's awesome because you're on the set, you're in post, you know, um, doing music, the whole bit. And so I kind of fell into it that way and, and sort of became an evangelist for TV, saying, going back to UCLA and saying this is a great path. Uh, I was a Trojan and we're better at football than the guy next to me. Um, powder blue yeah. Bruins. Um, I, I went to film school there. I grew up on a farm in North Dakota, so if you could make it from the farm, like, eight miles from the Canadian border in the middle of North Dakota, anybody can make it. Um, Indiana, same thing. Yeah, so, you know, it's just a long, hard road any which way, but I got, um, I got pretty adept at selling pitches at one point and features, and I really think that's a useful thing, is if you think you got something worth telling, I tell it to your buddies, I tell people in bars, I tell people my stuff, and don't worry about people stealing it. If they do, it's flattery, and you'll have a good idea beyond that one. But you can really measure, like, just, if do people's eyes, like, light up a little bit, they look up and left, like, wow, that's something I've never heard before, but it sounds exciting. It's such a shared medium, and I write with a partner, and so much of it is acknowledging that all of your ideas aren't good, but getting to the point where you can see it and feel it when you got something there. And, um, and I was a better pitcher than writer, and writing was a means to try to get to direct, kind of. Um, I didn't want to write either, but I guess I've been doing it 27 years now, so. But I had some features like Blown Away that, you know, had uh, Jeff Bridges and Tommy Lee Jones and Wind Talkers, and, but I have since gotten into TV kind of about at a really interesting time. I mean, it's it's really, it, as you said, it's it's the place to be and, you know, the serialize and tell them. It's like a Boris Pasternak novel you can now tell on TV where, you know, it used to just be, you gotta do the, I remember getting a deal at CBS and we pitched how all the characters' lives and their personal lives were gonna be so much a part of the show and they bought the show and shortly after they told us none of that was allowable. Um, and now it's just the opposite, so um, it's a great world to be in. Uh, I guess I had a Bonnie and Clyde miniseries that I was, we got nominated as best miniseries this last cycle, and Yay. yeah, uh, so that was fun to go to the Emmys. Um, and I guess that's about enough. Yeah. I didn't go to film school, so I was never there. Right. Um, I went to a liberal arts college called Pitzer College out in Claremont, very DIY stuff. Um, do-it-yourself media, and I always knew I wanted to be in entertainment, so I just kept doing all the, everything they tell you to do in the books, like, oh, get a job at an agency, and get on a desk, and then somebody will hire you, and you'll go up. So I did all that, and it just wasn't working for me, and I quit. I was doing my stuff on the web with my friends, and we were getting our views, and making our super low CPM, which doesn't do anything for anyone ever, um, and I was a writer's assistant to a very famous writer. And one day he threw a script at me. I quit the next week. I said, I just, I can't do this. I have stories that I want to tell and I don't want to help you anymore. I don't want to read your scripts. I don't want you to yell at me anymore. I don't want you to throw your scripts at me anymore. I'm doing what I want. I've already had my Kickstarters and my Indiegogos and I'm doing my own thing, so why am I here? And I quit my job and my mom supported me, so. And she's still there. <laughs> <laughs>